warm welcome to everyone. So it's a pleasure to have with me Bipram Jit Kaur, the author of the book, Wisdom Existence. Thanks for joining us today. To begin with, I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to you, madam. And I, along with my entire team of excellent books, we want to congratulate you on the success. And we are very proud to have worked on this program. I will start by saying a few words about Vivian and her book. Visit Existence delves into the complexities of human life during the pandemic era. Through her verses, Core explores the emotions, struggles, and reflections that have emerged among the global crisis. As a poet, Core's work has been celebrated internationally, making Visit Existence a captivating addition to the genre of pandemic literature, offering profound insights into the human condition. So uh, over to you, madam. So I would really want you to say a few words regarding your work that you have published. Um, uh, hello, viewers. And thank you for introducing me to my readers and viewers. I'm grateful to Exceller Books, a global press, for publishing my work and giving me this opportunity to talk about it. So uh, first of all, I would like to show the book to my viewers. So um, Vision, Existence, and Anthology. So uh, we are going to talk about it. So um, it's a multi-genre book, and it has been divided into different sections. Section one consists of long poems. They are written in free verse. Section two has micro poems. Section three consists of haiku and shahai. Uh, shahai is a photo haiku. Um, uh, haiku is a Japanese uh, poem of three lines, and shahai uh, means we write this poem on a photograph. And the last section uh, consists of uh, uh, various prose entries, and all these pieces are on the theme of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. This book also consists of a few illustrations. These illustrations have been um, made by my ex-student, Tanya. Um, uh, uh, let me show you a few uh, illustrations that have been included. For example, this one. So these illustrations also emphasize the theme. Um, and uh, they also make this book more interesting. Thank you so much uh, for this lovely introduction to your book. So I would like to ask you, like, what inspired you to write a poetry? or an anthology book, particularly based on the period of COVID-19. So what inspired you to write this book? Uh, well, authors draw inspiration from the contemporary life. They are always influenced by the various events. At the same time, creativity becomes more dominant when we face adverse situations. Yes. So creativity in such times comes out of, uh, out more uh, we can say uh, that it's uh, it comes out more strongly and it um, comes from the traumas uh, that people uh, uh, people you know aware on their bodies or the traumas that um, impinge on their minds so these are the situations when we feel helpless uh, we, we we feel that we are victims and we are not able to change our situation mm -hmm. because it is beyond our control. So in such situations, writing comes from the depth of our hearts. And one doesn't wait for inspiration to come. And we, you know, uh, we don't look for it, but words come to us naturally. And um, in a nutshell, uh, it's our response to that situation, or we can say it's our reaction. Uh, how uh, how do we, uh, you know, respond to uh, to it? So uh, our writing is our voice. It's uh, you can also say that it's our agitation because we are unable to comprehend the situation. So the same is true of this book, Visant Existence. Um, I can say that many pieces in this book wrote themselves and mm -hmm. uh, you can say that i was just an instrument um, um i was just a medium recording those uh, impressions mm -hmm. um on the contrary 
we look for inspiration in happy times we observe life around us we have time to pause and think and we also compose uh, our uh, you know we draft our compositions meticulously however this uh, you know doesn't happen when you know uh, a series of tragic events follow one another so uh, during pandemic we didn't have that luxury to pause and think so uh, you know we didn't have that careful contemplation so visant existence is also not a plan uh, anthology it's it's a multi genre book um i can say that it's a collection of random thoughts that came to my mind and when i was recording these thoughts i wasn't planning to uh, you know get them published or uh, to compile them in the form of a uh, uh, in form of a, an anthology so i had penned these thoughts during lockdown um and then uh, uh, you know covid waves were raging many people were you know uh, they were suffering so i was scribbling these thoughts in whatever form they came to me so mm -hmm. this is the reason it's a multi genre book so i oh. was uh, noting down my thoughts in my diary in the notepad of my mobile uh, phone whatever i had in my hand in my hand without you know uh, thinking of finalizing them for publication so okay. this is how this book has come out without any planning or without any careful um, contemplation editing was you know it was um, on later when i really thought of uh, compiling these pieces yeah, so I was just about uh, about to ask you that uh, we have passed that difficult period of COVID-19, then you must have published that book quite earlier, like it is uh, 2023 when you have contacted with us regarding the publication. So you have just answered that this is a random thought that you had during that period. So okay. Thank you. I, I could have uh, got them published during that period, but it wasn't easy for me to do, um, you know, to finalize it or to compile it. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. It takes time. Yeah, because it's it a curative was, work and it takes time. It takes time, but, you know, uh, I think I have already uh, talked, uh, I have already expressed my thoughts in this book. For example, in my, uh, my poem, um, uh, just a second, um, let me, yes part of me so in this particular poem i have included a few lines within within brackets and i've written that there are some poetic drafts yet to be reviewed and polished but part of me refuses to do so so i have also talked about the difficulty of you know finalizing the draft uh, similarly in the last prose entry of this book uh, I have written, I admit that I'm unable to find appropriate words to finalize uh, uh, these poems and uh, other pieces about the COVID pandemic. Uh, it's so intense, you know, uh, and I feel that this trauma goes beyond the words of human language. So when I was finalizing the drafts, I mean, how many adjectives can you use to describe a situation when it goes beyond, you know, uh, the realm of uh, uh, human language mm -hmm. and i don't think it's a tribute to those victims i believe that no tribute in words can compensate for that loss mm -hmm. so um i mean it wasn't easy for me to work on this topic mm -hmm. uh, absolutely yes thank you so much for your detailed like explanation and the inspiration for writing this book so basically, uh, you have already shared a lot uh, with us regarding uh, the background of the, of writing this uh, anthology. So can you share with us any specific uh, experience or moments uh, during the pandemic that served as inspiration for the uh, pieces in your book? Like any uh, particular experience or a, a moment in a day that uh, just uh, encouraged you to write a poem? Uh, 
So see, writing a poem takes still time, it takes a lot more of creativity and thought process. Everything compiled uh, is in order to create a poem. So can you just give us uh, this one incident such that uh, when you have uh, just wrote a poem, poetry and what was the behind story? OK, yes, um, as I have told you that these are random thoughts and, um, uh, you know, uh, the time uh, you know and these thoughts are usually spontaneous you know they you don't mm -hmm. draft them mm -hmm. so this is what i had experienced in those years and um it was written when we were confined to the four walls mm -hmm. of our home mm -hmm. and you know the laws were also stringent you know social distance mm -hmm. we maintained then lockdowns were imposed and they had to be to control, uh, you know, uh, a, a disease. So we were suddenly facing uh, loneliness, isolation, anxiety and despair. Um, the situation was incomprehensible. And, you know, there were so many questions in our mind. Mm -hmm. so it exactly began with questions. If you look at, uh, you know, the first um, uh, um, poem in this particular uh, anthology, where have they gone? So uh, uh, there are so many questions that are unanswered because at that time there were no answers to these questions. Mm -hmm. um, and online interaction had replaced, uh, you know, face-to-face -face, um, mm -hmm. uh, interaction. All of us were working online. So mm -hmm. we couldn't talk to our neighbors, our friends. In normal situation, we can have discussion. We try to understand what's going mm -hmm. on. Uh, but how much can you talk over phone? How much can you interact on social media? So in all these online interaction, one important element is missing. That is human touch. So yeah. when we try to console one another, uh, you know, in tragic times, mm -hmm. um, we develop that sensitivity that empathy and there is human you know mm -hmm. a sort of human touch so mm -hmm. we interact with somebody face to face mm -hmm. and uh, you can you know just console the person by uh, hugging that person or you know human touch was missing in all the these interactions secondly um you know when i used to look out of the window uh, mm -hmm. of my house i could see people uh, wearing masks so it was very difficult mm -hmm. to identify whether you are known to that person or not and who is behind that mask so one could get clue from their body structure and um, um, i mean it was very difficult to recognize people mm -hmm. so all these feelings have been expressed in this book consciously or unconsciously so i can talk about a few poems like uh, you know uh, frozen life force Visant existence, fake existence. So these poems actually, you know, express, uh, you know, uh, this this kind of life, which uh, which was mm -hmm. not actually a life. So in frozen life force, I, uh, uh, let me uh, read a few lines. I have written, um, the life force is frozen, attenuated, and stifled in the COVID pandemic. So this this um, feeling of uh, being stifled, being buried, being isolated, it's there in the entire um, anthology. So I have also, you know, written a few micro poems uh, on, on this. For example, there is a Shahai, um, and uh, it was also published in Scarlet Dragonfly J Journal, and it was written for their special Halloween uh, issue, uh, stepped out without a mask, COVID monster throttled me. So if I can show these images. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. how it was to go out without wearing a mask and how suffocated you feel uh, uh, because um, people were not comfortable. Uh, in, initially, you know, it was very difficult, uh, you know, uh, to manage. And this kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I have also written on um, in haiku. You know, haiku is usually um, experiential uh, poetry, which is uh, it can be imagined, but you know, mainly it is experiential. And a few haiku included in this particular anthology. 
are based on you can say some kind some sort of uh, personal experience for example i have written on quarantine isolation and there there is one i would like to read it's a very interesting yeah. agoraphobia seeking solitude in spring to shape back to life so this particular haiku was written when uh, restrictions were being lifted and i had to face you know uh, students uh, when one uh, you know um, uh, in offline interaction i found it difficult um, uh, on the very first day so agoraphobia is fear of being in public places where there are so many people so um in two years there were empty classrooms there was no student and you know for a long time uh, there was work from home or 50 percent attendance was essential so they were uh, there was nobody um, you know in institutions at that time so um agoraphobe um there was awkwardness you know when, yeah. when you return to that normal situation and uh, that is uh, uh, expressed in this particular piece now there is one more haiku it was published in the poetry p journal and it's related to brain fog uh, i'll uh, uh, i would like to read this haiku along mm -hmm. with another poem from section one uh, uh, brain fog my poetic thoughts unpoetic so what was the impact of covid what was the impact of post covid complication on my uh, imagination mm -hmm. so i talked about it in this particular haiku and i have also written a long poem on uh, on this this post covid syndrome dreamless eyes so i would like to talk about this poem in uh, you know in detail uh, dreamless dream the word dream in this particular poem has literal meaning it means the dreams that we experience in our sleep it uh, it's also a metaphor for my for my poetic imagination and how i suffered after you know i recovered from uh, that infection so this entire poem is about that so let me read uh, stanza 1 post covid dreamless eyes staying awake in the middle of night so initially i suffered sleeplessness um so this this particular stanza reflects it dreamless eyes staying awake you know if you are unable to sleep you can write something you can think of um, you can write a few lines you can do something however I was unable to write poetry. You know, it this continued for a few uh, for a few months. Uh, you know, after to recovery, it was a sort of you can say brain fog. So I felt that my creativity and imaginative ability had dwindled, and I observed that I couldn't uh, dream in my sleep. So whenever I use, uh, um, uh, I had you know, um, I mean, sleep sleeplessness um uh, for a few nights but whenever i used to sleep i um i uh, didn't have dreams i don't know why it happened i mean it's bizarre but uh this uh, and it continued for a few months i couldn't write poetry the thoughts that uh i scribbled were also dull you know they 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 lack that um poetic grace that poetic beauty or you can say that they were you know um, a few lines a few prose lines that i wrote <laughs> at that time i was worried that i would not be able to write poetry again or i'll switch over to uh, <laughs> poems um and it was you know i have also included seasonal reference in two <laughs> of this poem uh, because it was spring, you know, when I was going through all this, it was spring season. How the pandemic spring was different for me uh, mm -hmm. at that time, I have talked about it. Mm -hmm. The pandemic spring, I read uh, the next stanza, this, the pandemic spring, 
typical dream bubbles have burst with a single prick of renewal. So a, a fickle dream bubbles, you know, this particular image um, uh, also highlights, um, mm -hmm. um, you can say, ephemeral and elusive nature of dreams and of life itself. Mm -hmm. And this prick um, comes from that, you know, a pricking sensation, which was one of the symptoms one could feel that pricking sensation when one was, you know, infected with COVID and that hammering sensation, those body aches. So these images come from there, single prick of renewal. So when we talk about spring, we also talk about re uh, regeneration. We talk mm -hmm. about renewal. And at that time, I uh, related to uh, bare trees that uh, were not having leaves. You know, when we look at those uh, bare branches of uh, trees, they, they don't look beautiful because there are no leaves on them. However, they point upwards. It seems that they point towards the sky and they are, I mean, in complete surrender, they are waiting for new buds to come and mm -hmm. to get covered with new leaves. So when I related it to spring, I stopped worrying because um, mm -hmm. I, mean, I was helpless. What could I do? I could only wait for okay. that phase to be over. So I could relate it to spring and, you know, um, and um, I, I, I've also talked about snow melt, fresh it. Fresh it means flood. Uh, from um, um, a flood of a river from melted snow. So snow melt um, during spring season. So when winter snow starts getting, uh, it starts melting. So that melting has been related to melting of dreams. Uh, uh, in, in my case, it was melting of dreams. Um, because I, I, I had no poetic vision, no dream um, during those months. Mm -hmm. So here, dreamless eyes, you know, it. Uh, um, this doesn't mean that I have um, consciously related these things, but these thoughts came to my mind. So when you asked me to, uh, you know, uh, when you asked for an interview, so I looked carefully at it, analyzing it. So in the last stanza, I've also talked about post-dream melt. What happens when all your dreams have melted and, uh, you know, my eyes bereft of dreams bare. Now there are no dreams left. There is no uh, vision left. So you can only surrender to this helpless situation and wait uh, for the next fill, uh, a renewed fill of spectacles. So this is what the poem is about. And another interesting poem is uh, Corona Hives. So I uh, have an interesting story to share. Uh, I can talk about the genesis of this poem because this poem, um, a, a few pieces have been carefully, you know, they, they have been drafted. They have been influenced from a particular moment. And this poem is an example of that. So I had gone, <coughs> excuse me. I had gone for a walk with my friend in a botanical garden, and uh, but my attention was on the screen of my phone. I was trying to upload a, uh, some some document, some PDF. It was related to work, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't think that we were free or we were sitting at home writing poetry. We were busy at that time because shifting mm -hmm. to online mode, preparing PDF, taking online, attending to online work. You know, it was. Uh, tedious, so we were always busy. Yeah, it was all new uh, like experience for each one of us. The shifting from the offline to the online. Yes. So when I was, uh, you know, um, looking at, uh, I was engrossed in my work. Mm -hmm. um, so I went quite uh, close to a small tree. It was having a gigantic beehive, and I was about to bump into it. But my friend saved me. She had observed it, and you know, she dragged me backwards. Um, uh, I had never seen a beehive so closely. I mean, I have always seen them hanging from tall trees or tall buildings. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, when I looked at those bees and what could have happened 
uh, if I, uh, you know, uh, uh, after touching it accidentally. So I was terrified when I thought of it. And that seemed impinged on my mind. At that time, we were also having discussion on coronavirus because uh, my friend, you know, she she's from science background. So we were also talking about it. So um, the virus was in our mind. So I'm uh, perhaps, you know, it was my own mental projection. So when I looked at those full grown bees and that beehive, um, I could, you know, um, uh, related to um, yeah, the virus. And um, this is how this poem was written. And if you look carefully at the structure of this poem, uh, you will feel that it's in the form of a beehive, the way beehive is like this. Yeah, right? it's true. So, um, and there is a um long line separating different stanzas so um i don't know why i have written like this but i can only say that these long lines separating uh, these stanzas shape like uh, beehives mm -hmm. so they refer to different waves or different phases or and the virus was also um, uh, getting uh, you know there was mutation and there were different waves so uh, structurally, you know, I can talk about this particular poem. And I have ended section one with jab of poetry. I mean, um, this particular poem um, has been inspired from the vaccination, COVID vaccination. Initially, senior citizens were allowed to get vaccinated. I wasn't allowed, but I, uh, I, I accompanied my parents to the uh, vaccination center. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the first positive movement during the entire pandemic. I mean, it the scene of people getting vaccinated gave a sort of uh, satisfaction. It gave a sense of security that, you know, we can be saved. So it was a ray of hope after a, a dark night of despair. Mm -hmm. So this jab, uh, I wasn't allowed to get vaccinated, but I could feel that poetry played, maybe writing played the same role in my life. So jab of poetry in my life makes me glide to newer heights. So the entire poem, uh, you know, uh, this uh, section one ends on a positive note that mm -hmm. writing or something is there. Um, that can save you, that can give you a new hope. And uh, writing was also therapeutic. Um, um, yes. I think it was therapeutic for everyone. So uh, um, then there are uh, many other um, uh, other uh, prose entries uh, in which I would have, uh, you know, expressed uh, the similar emotions. So these are a few pieces that were actually inspired from these moments, the moments I have just referred to. Yes, thank you so much. And yeah, it is indeed really true that during that period, each one of us, we were just trying to delete ourselves from the moment of life because there was nothing that we could do at home. There was no office, uh, no college, no school. So each one of us, we were just at our home and somehow all the creativity that were there inside us, it came out to some various medium actually. In your case, it was facing in some else case, it can be drawing or dancing. Yes. So many yeah. people uh, like they created their own channels there. So because we just wanted to get out from the monotonous or the from the depression that we were facing. Because two years it, it, it is sort of like a joke that we were captivated. Okay. Yes. So I was, uh, uh, this doesn't mean that I had written only during, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the pandemic. Um, I mean, uh, I had started writing at an early uh, stage. Mm -hmm. So pieces were published in school magazine. And I remember that one of my poem was also published in a regional newspaper in the student section. 
So I had just finished schooling at that time. So that was my first publication. So uh, I have been writing throughout my life, but I can say that during the pandemic, that writing, um, you know, it acquired a special significance, or you can mm -hmm. say that it played um, uh, role in role, a different role. It was therapeutic at that time. Mm -hmm. So we are almost at the end of the interview today. So I would just like to ask you that you have already uh, explained everything in a very beautiful manner. So uh, as the world continues to navigate the challenge of the COVID-19 pandemic, so what message or insight do you hope readers will take away from your book, Wizard Existence? Uh, OK, let me talk about it. I think I have. Um, included a few prose entries in which I've specifically referred to nature. And, uh, and there is a micro poem in which bleeding source, in which I have talked about it, bleeding source, inflicted by humans, bleeding source of nature, reopen and fail to get healed. The silent cry, masked humanity. So um, uh, even in prose entries, you know, I've tried to anticipate uh, the message this pandemic is giving us or a message we have been ignoring for a very long time. This doesn't mean that the message was only during the pandemic, but uh, uh, maybe we ignored something uh, due to which, uh, you know, it had happened. In prose entry one, I have also quoted John Dunn. Uh, the mm -hmm. talking of bell for whom the bell tolls it tolls mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. but in my prose entry this tolling bell i mean it's not only uh, when uh, because somebody has died or many people are dying but it is also for those who are alive so in this prose entry this tolling bell is a sort of alarm bell it's an alarm bell and we have been ignoring it um so we should be attentive and we should pay some attention to it. Now it's time to wake up. Otherwise, uh, it will be too late to reverse the process of climate change uh, when we talk about nature, natural world. So we are also, uh, you know, referring to uh, Anthropocene, clim climatic change. So all these thoughts, I don't know how they have, you know, uh, they have been expressed in this particular anthology consciously or unconsciously. Um, so what legacy are we leaving for the future generations? So we are talking seriously about it. What kind of world have we created for ourselves? Um, so uh, there is another poem in section one, tell me. I mean, that can be read in this, in this light where I have referred to it, uh, that I can't, you know, identify this, this, uh, but uh, this planet, the masked planet I'm inheriting today, doesn't look like the bright world I took birth and breath in. So I feel that I'm exiled in my own land. I'm wandering like a, a like an alien. So this this entire poem, you know, it has uh, expressed this particular theme that we need to wake up and pay attention to something. Secondly, life is to be, you know, it, it's to be reviewed in totality. Um, yeah. So here I would refer to my poem, Merging, uh, Merging Identities. So, um, I mean, it also reminds me of the Chinese symbol of yin and yang. Mm -hmm. So you can say that the opposites coexist in this world and yin and yang when we look at this this particular symbol it also reminds us of some kind of balance mm -hmm. uh, balance we need to preserve you know balance between um uh, human world and the natural world and um maybe among human beings alone so th this merging identities this particular poem also suggests oneness so when we look at the planet, the shape of this earth, it is round. 
right? All these heavenly bodies. So mm -hmm. we come to that circle. Uh, all these um, uh, seasons are cyclic in nature. Day is followed by night. Night is followed by day. Again, mm -hmm. there is a cycle of day and night. And then cycle of um, cycle of birth, death, rebirth. So when we, uh, you know, look at soul which doesn't die. So uh, this this I uh, um, uh, this particular poem refers to returning to the source without carrying the tags of identity. Without you know, uh, so there is no duality when a person when we die, and. Uh, I think this message is not uh, uh, in my book or in any book for that matter, but it's already there in nature, or you can say it is it's the essence of this this um, existence, this creation. And this kind of merging is happening every moment. you know, every dawn and dusk, we uh, uh, observe it, that the sun rays separate in the morning. And then they go back. I mean, uh, at the sunset. Mm -hmm. So uh, when things separate, they also merge. I mean, this is cyclic. Uh, one thing happens mm -hmm. after another. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I can just say that the merging um, is everywhere. And you know, when I refer to O of oneness, again, it's a complete, it's a circle, the zero, shunya, or it's there mm -hmm. in the primordial melody of Om sound. It's everywhere, except in our minds. So in yeah. normal situation, we don't acknowledge it. So we try to analyze, oh, I'm, uh, this person is, uh, you know, he's trying to help me. So mm -hmm. I can be biased on the basis of religion or caste mm -hmm. or nation or race. But in, you know, in um, uh, critical times, every help mm -hmm. is welcome. In the dark times, you know, we don't have time to be choosy. We can't mm -hmm. be choosy. Acceptance is the only option. And uh, these distinctions, you know, we just forget them because we are desperate mm -hmm. to get some kind of help. Um, but, um, on the other hand, the boundaries may also get, you know, they, they may be more rigid. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they can also be carefully maintained, you know, and uh, uh, various specialities may be unaccessible to the marginalized. That, mm -hmm. that also happens. Um, but if somebody comes and he tries to help us or just mm -hmm. uh, console us, so it's mm -hmm. welcome. So we forget about these distinctions. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, uh, we behave differently in normal situations. So uh, I would like to conclude that many writers may be writing, they may be, you know, uh, these expressions enter consciously or unconsciously in writing you know mm -hmm. something comes to your mind and you write it mm -hmm. uh, at other times a topic is given to you a theme is given to you and you imagine something and you write mm -hmm. it consciously or you know you collect information from different resources so uh, both things are possible um, so if many writers are talking about nature, how natural world is disrupted, and climate change, Anthropocene, uh, it means they, uh, they are experiencing uh, it. So it's something we are in. Mm -hmm. So uh, for example, in a protest, the protesters are carrying placards. And mm -hmm. each protester writes a slogan on a placard. So their slogans may be different, you know, different words can be chosen. And the person who is carrying those placards, they are also, you know, uh, not one person carries it. Mm -hmm. So it means this collective voice can be heard, you know, people pay, people will pay attention to it because it's louder. Louder. Yes. Mm -hmm. So different slogans on the same theme. Similarly, mm -hmm. if writers are, you know, taking up, uh, let's say, um, these issues, it means mm -hmm. um, they are they have experienced something, and mm -hmm. every epoch has its own um, uh, uh, characteristics, its own events, its own uh, themes, its own writing styles, 
major and minor writers. Similarly, mm -hmm. we can say that the pandemic, or uh, I mean, Anthropocene may be, you know, mm -hmm. one such uh, period when we are going through this. So writers can't isolate themselves from mm -hmm. uh, the contemporary events. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, uh, it's up to readers what message they want to get, but yes. uh, the main purpose wasn't, uh, it, it was to communicate. So I, I'll call it a sort of survival strategy. Mm -hmm. So when you can't go out and talk. Right. You talk, mm -hmm. uh, you, you call somebody, but that is not going to continue, let's say, beyond half an hour. Mm -hmm. So you can't have long discussion. People were also busy in their work, online work. They were facing many challenges. Um, so uh, it also reminds me of a text, um, The Diary of Anne Frank, which is, uh, I mean, it's the diary of a Jewish girl where she has recorded her experience, um, uh, you know, yes, experiences of daily life when they went into a hiding. So it was during the Nazi regime so the diary becomes her best friend and she also names it um so i i call it a sort of survival strategy so the confinement that these um you know uh, jews were having at that time but our mm -hmm. confinement was of different nature um, yes. so it was you know an enemy which uh, which is invisible so you can't you don't understand what's happening and what's mm -hmm. going to happen to you. So it was, um, and communication is also, um, you know, it's a basic human need. We can't live without it. So um, noting down these thoughts in whatever form they came, so it was also a sort of uh, communication or a survival skill, you can call it. I So that's what I can say about it. So basically, after just hearing to you, it is very obvious that each one of us can relate to me because we all went to the same place at the same time. So I think this book will create a great impact on our readers' minds since all of us we have gone through the same phase uh, over the two years that we have passed. So thank you for your in-depth explanation for uh, the inspiration and everything that you have been mentioned here in the interview. So I would also like to uh, include a few uh, things about uh, her book, that her book is already available on Amazon.com uh, Amazon and Amazon Kindle and Google and Google Play in both the version, e-version, and also in the paperback version. So if you want to grab a copy of her book, please uh, uh, search on the description box and you will find all the relevant things there. So uh, thank you, uh, Vipanjit. I'm delighted and honored to be a part of this uh, author interview series of Exceller Books. Thank you for having me here.